Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from sound for more it's Leo speaking. Today I would like to give my contribution to audio kit in terms of showing you how you can use audio, uh, audio kit inside Swift Playground on an iOS platform, in this case an iPad. Before I start, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel, bringing more videos and tutorials. So this video is a little bit different than the usual because it will show you an introduction to Swift Playground and also a bit of an introduction on how to code using the audio kit uh, package inside an iPad. <clears throat> the first thing you need to do is to go to your App Store, search for Swift Playground and then download that unless you have already done that and then open it when you have done so you are presented with this screen so starting from the top you have a location in terms of the folder you're working on yeah if you click on this icon it will create a new application then you have access to an help menu which you can read at your leisure then you can select, like so, different um, items on the screen. Then you can duplicate them, delete them, share them, etc. using these options up there. And at the bottom here, you have uh, more playgrounds. You have access to templates, which you can use, but also the creation of app and playground. If you click see all, you see also the entire list of app gallery. Uh, how to extend your apps, books, etc. So let's go back to the My Playground. So what I would like to show you is a quick introduction on how to use AudioKit. So for those purposes, let's click on the plus up here and that will generate a new app. Now we click and hold on that app to access the submenu where we can rename, duplicate, share and delete the app. We select uh, um, rename and I have a Bluetooth keyboard connected so let's call this my oscillator and press enter okay you also have another option here which is to create a new playground which I'm not going to use it at the moment but that is where you can type code and see straight away the outcome of it on the right hand side so let's click on the my oscillator application here so you're presented with this view where on the right hand side you have a, the app preview which in this case is showing you a little icon which is a globe which corresponds to this image here called globe and also a bit of text called hello world which corresponds to this text here which is used on the code. So you have the code on the left hand side and the preview of the app on the right hand side. You can maximize the preview, you can minimize it again, and you can close it like so. You can reopen it, press it again on this button like so. You can have access now to additional settings, which um, um, if people are interested, um, let me have some comments and I will create more tutorials. And then you can click on the plus sign and um, you can add different controls as you wish. Up here, you can close the application clicking on the X. You can uh, run the application clicking on the symbol for play. And then you can click on the symbol to show the application settings and then the additional code resources as I will show you in a moment. You also have access here to the symbol which shows you the console, which in this case it is empty. This is where you see messages, for example, status messages, which is useful, for example, for uh, output checking or even debugging. So the first thing you need to do to use AudioKit is to add it as a Swift package. So you click on this icon for add and select Swift package. Now you click on this to enter the URL. So the URL will be HTTPS and it will be github.com forward slash audio kit forward slash audio kit again and press enter. So if I type that correctly, it will find the version 5.3.0 will allow updates. The products to add to the project will be audio kit. Yes, just um, accept the default uh, settings and click on add to project as you can see it has added this package on the left hand side in which you can expand and have a look at your leisure okay so at this point um audio kit recommends to um play and to build your, your application because uh, it helps with recognizing then the intelligence or 
um, recognizing the type of words and commands and object included in the package, as I will show you in a moment. So let's click on that play. Um, and it will take a few seconds or up to a minute, depending on the speed of your iPad. As you can see, and the application has been built and you see it in full screen. Now, if you um, click up here, at some point, this will come available. You click on it and it will give you option to restart the application, to stop it, to show the project, which will mean the application is still running, to show the console and delete the application data restart, which will recompile the entire application. So let's select stop the project for now. Okay, so let's start with some code. So I click just um, below that. And the first thing you need to do is to import the audio kit. And as you can see, as I'm typing, it's recognizing, so it's trying to be intelligent enough to use IntelliSense and recognize what you might want to do or to include in this case, uh, yes, I want audio kit. So I press enter and it will automatically enter audio kit will finish up for you what you're writing so let's click enter again now let's create a class which is a container if you like and i'm not going through the entire explanation of swift in an introduction but let's call these uh, oscillator generator for now and um, each class needs to be closed between curly braces like so so inside here we are going to create a new variable we're going to call that, um, why not, engine. And this will be type of audio engine. And this will be the audio engine that we need to use. At the same time, we're going to create another variable and we're, called it, we're going to call it oscillator. And this will be a playground oscillator. So I type play and I have two choices, playground oscillator and playground noise generator. Let's choose the first one. So I press enter. Okay, perfect. Next, what I would like to do is to create a number of functions that I need to use. Actually, before I do that, let me create also another variable and I call it initialized. And this will be a type bool, like so. And the initialized value will be false. Okay. Next, as I was mentioning a moment ago, let's create some function. The first one is to initialize um things as the class generators is created and for this i'm not using what is called the init function of the class because i notice sometimes it doesn't allow uh audio kit to to play sound the first time that you um you run it by the way i forgot to add as you can see it's showing you some errors here which means you need to correct it i forgot to add the uh, parentheses like so and as you can see when the errors uh, are not present anymore the message will disappear so let's continue so the first thing I want to do in the initialize function I need to check if it has not been initialized before like so and putting the exclamation mark means it's not been initialized so if it's not been initialized what we are going to do we are going to initialize the variable to true like so and then what we are going to do, we're going to set the oscillator amplitude to 0 0.25. And you can decide what you want to do is up to one and also the frequency to 200 Hertz, like so. Next, we are going to uh, call the engine and set the output to the oscillator like so. And then what we are going to do, we're going to uh, try to start the engine itself. You can see it shows froze. Yeah, so we're going to try that. I uh, like so. So we have initialized, created a function which uh, initialize. Uh, oops, I made a mistake here. There should be a exclamation mark. Perfect. Okay, and but while I'm here, I want to initialize that. Um, um that class so uh let me remove the those controls here which are not needed anymore like so perfect like that and then at the end here inside these uh, view 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a oscillator generator class from the um, actually what I ever called it up here I called it um, the class is oscillator generator so let's give it another name otherwise it's confusing let's call it um, oscillator for now and that would be your type oscillator generator like so like that so we have created it now perfect so I want to go up here now and create an, some additional function the first one would be a toggle function so let's say we call it toggle sound like so and this function will play a sound if it's not being played start the oscillator or stop it if it has already started so in that case we need to check if the oscillator is still playing if it is playing with a question mark we are going to stop it on the other end if it was not playing we are going to start it like so the other thing I want to do before that is done I want to call the initialize function which will initialize um, the engine as per function up here if it hasn't been initialized before based on the variable called initialize which is a bool variable finally um, what I want to um, do is um, uh, build a button here and let's call it um, play sound like so and, uh, and inside here we're going to call the oscillator instance and we are going to call the function toggle uh, sound so if everything is okay I can now start the application and if it's okay it will show play sound and if I click on play sound it will play sound if everything works okay and if I click on it again it will stop okay and that has um, worked very nicely indeed and of course you could go back change the frequency change the amplitude uh, this is just one example and if um, subscribers are interested I might create more tutorial on how to show you how to create um, perhaps a true synth using uh, um, Swift Playgrounds on the iPad. Okay, I hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Bye.